Beloved in Christ, welcome to the Healing Streams Reflections. The title for today's post is The 14 Days Fast. In Acts chapter 27, verse 27 to 34, we saw Paul on the way to Rome on a shipwreck with 276 men. And so the Bible says that and in all were 276 persons on the ship. So when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and threw out wheat into the sea. When it was day, they did not recognize the land, but they observed a bay with a beach onto which they planned to run the ship if possible. I'm reading from Acts chapter 27, verse 27 following. He says, Now when the 14th night had come, as we were driven up and down in the Adriatic Sea, about midnight, the sailors sensed that they were drawing near some land. And they took soundings and found it to be 20 phantoms. And when they had gone a little farther, they took soundings again and found it to be 15 phantoms. Then fear released, we shall run aground on the rocks. They dropped four anchors from the stern and prayed for day to come. And as the sailors were seeking to escape from the ship, when they had let down the skiff into the sea, under pretense of putting out anchors from the prow, Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, unless These men stay in the ship. You cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut away the ropes of the skiff and let it fall off. And as they was about to down, Paul implored them all to take food, saying, Today is the 14th day you have waited and continue without food and eating nothing. Therefore, I urge you to take nourishment. But well, this is for your survival, since not a hair will fall from the head of any of you. This is the word of the Lord. Beloved, what they feared most, according to Acts chapter 27, verse 27 to 34, is a shipwreck. After 14 days of drinking at sea, of, of drifting, sorry, of drifting, drifting at sea. They came to the land, but the ship ran aground and got what? Stuck in the reef. When it started being broken down by wind, they had to swim to shore. What a great loss it was in the end. So the sailors wanted to abandon their ship and their passengers in the thick of things. They became unreasonable. Paul now had to assume leadership of the ill-fated ship. When God speaks through you into a situation, he gives you leadership of the situation. Now, this means when you act on what God says about a situation in your life, you are automatically taking change of that situation. Now, in verse 33,
The word nothing, the Greek word used here means they had eaten no regular meal. Now, in verse 34, they should have attempted to force at least some food down, irrespective of their seasickness, which no doubt some of them still had. That is, if you uh, do what I say. So, 14 days prayer and fasting is a deliberate, prolonged prayer period of fasting and fervent prayer in which automatically one finds that he or she have less desire or need for food, but find greater longing to cleanse all aspects of his or her life, especially his or her spirit, through longer and more intense times of prayer with the Lord. Beloved, this fast requires water. Fasting without water beyond three days can lead to disaster depending on the body constitution of the one fasting. You see, what one can do without water in a short fast, one is water in a long fast, which lasts for several weeks. Now, a great deal of water should be taken while and they're taking a protracted fast. Now, before commencing such a fast, you should assess your health and consider visiting a health professional. This is a time of focused and intense prayer so as to be more sensitive to the Holy Spirit, the voice of God, and be better able to discern the direction God desires for the Christian to take. Now, this fasting keeps the Christian to bring the flesh under submission and opens him to the still small voice of the Lord. During the two weeks of prayer and fasting, there could be other prayer meetings designated for people to pray for their specific needs. This is a time when the Holy Spirit prompts a Christian to fast by giving him or her a sense that the time has come to quit living with a problem. You see, sometimes the problem has an element of sorrow to it. There is pain, grief, disappointment, or some form of emotional or physical distress, in addition to a growing inner sense of burden, heaviness of sorrow. We often have a growing feeling that we need to make a break with the current way of doing things and in turn make a new start. Now, this period of fasting sends a signal to your own body, soul, and spirit that um, you are setting aside a period of time to devote yourself more intensely and fervently to the Lord in a sacrificial way. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Romans that they were to present their bodies as a living sacrifice. Romans 12, 1. This, in many ways, a time of fasting, or in many ways, a time of fasting is a time of personal. It's a time of personal. personal sacrifice a sacrifice so the question we have to ask ourselves is that what is a sacrifice you see a sacrifice is something we give to the Lord completely never to receive it back again the food the time the gift, the talent, offering of your praise, thanksgiving to the Lord, takes your intention, takes your energy and your efforts. You see, it means you are going to give up. I mean, you are giving up to the Lord your identity and your labor. And now, that, you see, the, the more seriously we approach prayer and fasting, the more serious the result we will experience. 
I, I personally usually find that after the fast, I have renewed enthusiasm and even greater courage for undertaking the tax the Lord has set before me. And so, with this prayer type of fasting, it is very, very important. And I believe that you and I should understand the dynamics of the fact that prayer and fasting in general enhances our spiritual stability, enhances our spiritual, you know, acumen, and more importantly, our spiritual thermostat and thermometer is able to operate on God's standards and God's patterns and precepts that God has ordained for us. It is my prayer that you and I will understand the dynamics that um, the Lord patterns and ways of doing things are meant for our good. And in practicing fasting with prayer, the first thing you have to take into consideration is your health. Is your health. Some cannot do 40 days fast, but some can do it. Um, some too did it, and they did it without knowledge, and they lost their lives. Some too, in recent time, there was, it was in the news that a Mozambican priest, a pastor, fasted 40 days. And at the end of 40 days, without water, without anything, and disaster happened. Um, we have to be very careful also with applying knowledge, wisdom, in handling some of these things. And what I would advise you is this, that depending upon your body constitution, you can do um, fasting from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Fasting is not the number of hours that you fast. It's about your devoted time in the presence of God. That is what makes fasting meaningful. Some people can fast from 6 a.m. to 12 noon. Some people can do it from 12 noon to 6. Some people can do it 6 to 6. Some people can do it. Some people to their body is conditioned to fast for 24 hours. Some to their body is conditioned to fast for, you know, three days. Some can do three days. Some can do seven days. Some can do 14 days. Some can do 21 days. Some can do um, 40 days and so on and so forth. But in all these, please, you need to be conscious about your health and I know that it's the spirit that also helps us to do these things but in fasting you must be led by fast but you, you must be led by the spirit of God to fast don't just wake up and just elect yourself to fast you need to be led by the spirit of God it is my prayer that all that you have heard the living God will help you to understand the dynamics of prayer and fasting. And the Lord himself will help you through these times of waiting upon him. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord cause his favor to rest upon you. May the good Lord himself be your portion in all things. Bye for now.